What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and I'm about to hop on the mail order glide, the Bangkok bagger, the incredible bolt. Head up to Tampa International Airport because the shop goblin is back in town. Well, as those of you guys who've been following the channel know, the shop goblin is kind of the missing piece of the puzzle here in Tampa for Brap Star Garage. So she is actually moving here from New York, but uh, there's still a lot of stuff she has to do here at the house she's moving into and some decisions she has to make. So she's heading down here, but you know what? <laughs> she ain't gonna get out of work and just cause she's heading down to make some decisions on the house. I happened to just get in an order of new t-shirts from Lee Stewart from Rogue Lab Manufacturing. And <laughs> guess what shop goblin's gonna do as soon she steps foot inside the house. Not to mention, I'm not really sure how Shop Goblin's gonna take me showing up on the Gold Wing because I am sure that she assumes that I'm, I'm coming in the F-350, but uh, I don't know, man, it's just too nice out. I could not take the bike to pick her up in the airport. Oh, crap, I just realized she probably has luggage with her. Well, that's a Gold Wing. We can fit some luggage on here. Hopefully it's not too much. <laughs> I wonder how many times these guys see motorcycles picking people up. I can't be the only one that's done this. Oh, no sign of shop goblin might not have gotten off her plane yet here's the one of the cool things about being on a motorcycle and picking somebody up at the airport is you're not supposed to stop anywhere but it's way easier to kind of pull off the side of the road and fake it on a motorcycle i don't know how many other places are like this but tia makes you do a constant loop so i'm just gonna hang out here for a second until shop goblin hits me up or somebody yells at me i've always been more of a beg for forgiveness than ask for permission kind of guy, if you know what I mean. All right, let's make another pass and see if she got out there. Well, Shop Goblin said she was outside, but I just made another pass and I don't see her. So uh, something tells me she might've gone to the departing flights. Let's go check over there. <laughs> so this is uh... a... Of course I did, it's nice out. <laughs> this will probably fit um also this is uh <laughs> this is departing flights i promise it's not going anywhere all right what do you give our odds is there anything important in here that ain't going nowhere all right let's rock and roll <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm this way. I'm broken. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I promise it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm just gonna secure it slightly better. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, now it's not going anywhere. I, I swear it. The first one was merely a test. Unsurprisingly, uh, the shop goblin is less than amused, so let's go ahead and get her home. All right, it's the next day. It's Father's Day, and uh, let me tell you guys, uh, I've always said that uh, Shop Goblin coming down here is kind of the missing piece of the puzzle. It's part of what's gonna make uh, everything work a little bit better. And when I say work, yes, we do a lot of work, but part of that is, uh, is Shop Goblin saying, maybe you shouldn't work so hard and do something fun. So <laughs> she's sitting here, and uh, her first order of business was to say, hey, uh, let's, uh, let's not work for a day, let's take a day off, and let's all sit down, roll some character sheets, and play some D&D. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Nico, you freaking nerd. <laughs> it's time to play some D&D. &D. It's time to finally take a day off. You guys who know the kind of week that we've all been having here know that things have absolutely been insane around Brapstar Garage, so I am not going to feel bad about taking a day off and living and fighting and casting spells. Well, I'm not gonna cast any spells, I'm a barbarian. But <laughs> Nico's gonna cast some spells, he's a tiefling. <laughs> living somewhere else, if only for a few hours. And you guys who've never played D&D, &D, maybe uh, you won't be that excited about it, but I know I got a lot of you guys down there who like role playing stuff, so that's what we're doing today. <laughs> So Shop Goblin just corrected me because, uh, let me tell you, I, I, as a barbarian, I play fast and loose, man. My intelligence level <laughs> is low. And she goes, you can't just say he's a tiefling, he casts spells. It's being like, oh, he's a black person, he casts spells. Like, he's a paladin, that's a tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify, because if I didn't clarify this now, Shop Goblin would never let me hear the end of it. Anyway, like I said, happy Father's Day. 
Well, like I always say, nobody does it alone. So we're here at the Shop Goblin's house. Dave, Cindy, and Chris are up here from Forgotten Angels, uh, working way harder than I than I am right now, especially way harder than I am at Shop Goblin's house because uh, I'm currently holding a camera and talking to it. So it's good to have good friends and uh, nobody does it alone. Huge thanks to these guys for uh, helping us out because this would have taken me forever. All right, guys, it's another day. What day it is, I don't know. What day it is in conjunction to the videos I filmed before this, I also don't know, because things are crazy and hectic right now. <laughs> Just finishing up at the Dirty Shame, doing my normal Thursday activities, cleaning up piss from the men's room floor. Y'all need to learn how to aim, okay? Got some awesome new beers on deck at the Dirty Shame, and uh, I think we're gonna start something cool. It's gonna be called 40 Beers in 40 Nights. And so if you can drink 40 different beers in 40 nights, <laughs> I'm not encouraging you to try to do it all in one night. Uh, take your time. Me and Richard are talking about getting like a big wood plaque, putting it on the wall and putting people's names on it. Like, I don't know, man, that sounds kind of cool. I mean, maybe it's been done at other places before, but we haven't done it here, God damn it. And we got lots of beers. Anyway, that's enough beer talk. Back to motorcycles. The Honda's full of motorcycle parts outside right now. I need to take my Goldwing up to Brapstar Garage, unload some of these motorcycle parts and get some of the other motorcycles in Brapstar fleet running. The crusty but trusty mail order glide. This thing ain't let me down yet. I mean, it let Shelby down because the fuel pump died on him, but it hasn't let me down. I got the I got the back of this thing full of Harley parts for the FXR and the Sportster, which I'm sure just amuses the Honda boys to no end. Yeah, the Honda Goldwing is a bike that runs well enough to fill full of Harley parts to go get your Harleys running. And honestly, probably not get them running for very long. Luckily, the Goldwing will still keep on ticking to pick up more parts for the Harleys when they inevitably break again. And of course, they're not new Harleys. New Harleys are just as reliable as anything else. Harleys from the 80s? Eh, slightly less so. At least definitely slightly less so than my 1980s Goldwing. Yeah, the Hondas versus Harley thing, to me, is absolutely hilarious. Speaking of Hondas, <laughs> a fellow not Honda that was a Kawasaki Voyager. Ah, uh, fun fact, I almost bought a Kawasaki Voyager instead of my first Goldwing. Oh, how the world might have been different for me. It definitely would have been different for Honda because right now, I don't think that Honda Official or Honda America is the biggest fan of old Shade Tree Surgeon. As I was saying, the whole Honda versus Harley thing is funny because Honda's original slogan, maybe not original, but back in the day was you meet the nicest people on a Honda because they wanted to go against Harley outlaw image and say hey you can have a Honda and be like a nice law-abiding citizen and I'm taking it back baby let's make Honda's bad again especially now that gold wings are affordable baby even the bad boys even the scumbags can get a gold wing now I love it you heard it here first we're taking it back you meet the worst people on a Honda people like me People like you, the viewer, watching right now. People who hang out in places like the Jayhawk Motel, adult movies, daily and weekly rates. And guess what? If you go in that office, hourly too. You don't even want to imagine what's happening in those rooms right there. So this is what we're doing. <laughs> just to, because I think it's fun to mess around with Honda America, because uh, I'm just never going to get a sponsorship no matter how hard I try. So I might as well just try hard not to. This is the new hashtag. Hashtag you meet the worst people on the Honda, because the hashtag you meet the nicest people on a Honda uh, doesn't have that many posts on Instagram and I think that Shade Tree Army and our legion of Honda riding dirt bags can take it back. So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to find the places where Honda would never want gold wings or other motorcycles seen. I'm talking no tell motels, sex shops, adult arcades, titty bars, tattoo parlors, liquor stores, whatever you got near you. If you're riding a Honda, I want you to go out Take a picture, use the hashtag, you meet the worst people on the Honda, because I'm going to be following that hashtag now on Instagram. So if you post a picture with that hashtag, I'll see it. I'm going to share the best ones, and we're making Hondas dirty again. Big bonus points if you can get somebody scantily clad to pose on your Honda. And extra, extra bonus points if you tag Honda US Power Sports in the post. I don't know why I'm doing this. I actually really like my Honda. I just can't help myself. Let's make Hondas weird again. Let's make Hondas dirty again scumbags are people too let's show them well maybe let's not make honda's dirty again let's uh let's make honda's dirty for the first time 
<laughs> Toodle melodiously. Melodiously? I have tootled, sir. Time to move. Do not make me tootle with vigor. Oh, it does accelerate with vigor, though. Ramming speed, baby. All right, headed up to the cycle gear now to pick up some supplies to do a little bit of maintenance on the gold wing, the bail order glide, and also the raspberry buffet. Kind of funny, you go like, oh man, I just changed the oil on these two bikes. Why am I changing it again? It feels weird. Oil changes feel like those things that you should only do like maybe a couple to a few times a year until you start taking 3,000 mile trips in one weekend and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I guess it is actually time to change the oil again. All right, I've got an oil filter for my GL 1200. Let's see if Cycle Gear's got an oil filter for the 1500. Well, that was cool. Cycle Gear had exactly what I needed. Oil filters for both bikes in stock, baby. All right, let's get this done. Not the most glamorous job in the world, just changing oil on your reliable Hondas, but at least that's pretty much all I got to do to them. All right, it's going to work out perfect. While the 1500 cools off a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and get the oil changed on the 1200 and hopefully do the last couple little things to show at least these sports so it's ready for this weekend. What's up, Rito? Shea Tree Surgeon here up at Brass Star Garage with my man Shelby, who just dropped something absolutely ridiculous in my lap and threw today's plans right into the crapper, but in a really good and fun way. I was just coming up here now to do some maintenance on the Hondas. Probably about the most boring thing you can do, right? Maintenance on Honda Goldwings. Like, <laughs> give me a freaking break, dude. Goldwings are boring already. Maintenance on Honda Goldwings, the most boring thing I can imagine. But Shelby walks up here and says, Man, I just got back from a dude's house with Dave and Cindy who had a very strange vehicle for sale. When I say strange vehicle, I mean super awesome, absolutely ridiculous. We have to go check this thing out because I can't stop myself from buying something that's very cheap and absolutely ridiculous. So on this episode of Will Shelby and Josh Go Make a Very Poor Financial Decision on a vehicle that may or may not make it home, let's go check out a six-speed manual 1992 Caprice station wagon with a 3 stroker. <laughs> Speaking of how I found out about this deal, Shelby literally just bought this VTX from the same dude who's selling this vehicle. Apparently, it's an everything must go sale. <laughs> Cool. Got a stick and surge solenoid, so uh, <laughs> every once in a while, it don't stop starting. Oh, oh. oh, those VTX 1800s, man. Those things are stout. Look at this. Me and Shelby, just two Honda boys out on the prowl. Love it, man. A VTX, dude. They're just about as stone cold reliable as a, as a Goldwing is. Much. Now that they get to ride one more than just a four mile test ride. You liking it? Yeah, Shelby's liking this one, man. The one or two or maybe even three of all the Marauder fans out there, they might be disappointed because there's not a whole lot of Suzuki Marauder content on YouTube, but you know, you sit on top of an 1800 versus your old 800 Marauder, a thousand CCs will change your mind. Bigger bike. Like yeah, I know, yeah, Shelby's like 6'2", man. He needs some room. I like bike. <laughs> <laughs> I like bike. One of the first times we're ever going to look at a vehicle that's not a bike on the Shade Tree Surgeon channel. But if we're going to look at a vehicle that's not a bike, you better believe it's going to be ridiculous. Oh man, Shelby's the one who told me about this thing, but he sent me some pictures and the way he made it sound. I got to tell you, I'm kind of excited about it. It's, would, if we got it, it would end up being the Brap Star shop truck. It's got her suspension on it and it has a trailer hitch. So this would be like the dirt bike vehicle. I mean, it's a woody right now, but I'm imagining it with a, like a top rack and some KC daylighters. Like, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'd want to make this thing into. I'm now consulting a couple of my friends who are car guys. I'm not a car guy. I'm a bike guy, although I like pretty much anything with a gasoline engine. And hell, I even like some things with electric engines. They've told me that the biggest thing to watch out for if it's a 383 stroker is if it's an LT1 or an LS1. Since it's an early 90s Caprice, it would have originally came with an LT1. LT1, and I've been told that the biggest issues on the LT1 is the water pump can start like weeping or leaking, and it will leak directly onto all of the electronics for the ignition of the vehicle, and it is very expensive to replace that.
that. So basically, there is a fix for that. There's a fix for this issue, which is like, like just a very bad design flaw by GM. And the fix for it is to do an LS swap, basically, because you probably spend just as much money doing the fix for the problem as you would just finding an LS and putting it in the vehicle. Like I said, I don't know much about cars, and the little I do know about cars is very much uh, about Ford vehicles. I don't know almost anything about GM products. I'm much more Ford focused, but <laughs> let me tell you, man, a six speed manual transmission in a Caprice wagon, that just sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> Here's Shelby on that 1800 back there. That's about uh, as polar opposite as you can get within Honda and still have a cruiser from a cold wing. Big rip snorting 1800cc V twin. I love that drive. <laughs> and the whole thing like squats up and down. <laughs> okay. Well, if anybody in uh, white people heaven neighborhood here is going to have a 383 manual transmission Caprice Classic, it looks like it's going to be this house. It is what it is. If he comes back and two. says two, uh, he's, I'll do it. You could drive it around and get it to where I could drive it around for like a thousand bucks. But to get it like to where it's like decent, like looks good, I'm like, oh, I'm going to enjoy driving this. Like three to five. It's going to be a lot more. Yeah. Right. Well, there's no video of that happening, unfortunately, but um, <laughs> I'll explain here why in just a second. So apparently this dude is moving out of here and everything must go. He sold Dave and Cindy the front door. Dave and Cindy from Forgotten Angels. That's how I found out about this. He sold them the front door off his house. Um, he's still living there, but now there's no front door. Door. So, uh, bit of an odd duck, but I liked him. So, yeah, no cameras allowed. Go into the backyard. There's multiple very cool vehicles uh, a newer Corvette, a uh, uh, 1969 Oldsmobile, uh, an old Toyota five speed minivan, and of course, the <laughs> Caprice wagon with a six speed and a 383. The guy who I was uh, talking about buying it from, he was wearing um, galoshes, socks that came above his knee that then were held up there with rubber bands, and uh, tight whiteys and that's it so take that picture in again real quick i don't know how i always meet these people but he's wearing briefs underwear <laughs> knee-high socks and rubber galoshes and that's oh, i'm sorry and a pair of blue blocker sunglasses that's how i rolled into the backyard with this guy so it was already going a little weird the car he wanted three grand for it but which is a deal and i get that it's got a lot of awesome parts on it but it was just a little too rough for, I don't have a lift, you know, I don't even have a space to keep it inside. Three grand was a little too rough for me to actually say yes to the vehicle. So I offered him two grand. He said he'd have to think about it. We'll see what happens. There are some issues with the transmission. I didn't feel like it was shifting very well. Might have just been low, like have an air bubble in the hydraulic system and the slave cylinder, or it might have been something else. Uh, the engine did not seem like it was making the power a 383 should make. That worried me a little bit too. And he said it needed a tune. And I'm sorry, man. And uh, needing a tune is usually code for it needs a lot more than a tune. Anyway, we're going to avoid the traffic because it's 5 o'clock and grab a beer and some cold AC at the press box. Well, ain't that Florida. <laughs> it ain't if you're going to get wet, baby. It's when. We stopped here at press box to eat some food, have a beer, wait out the traffic, wait out the heat. We, we waited out the traffic and the heat. I'm kind of chilly now. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Or at least the starter solenoid didn't stick. Yeah, this time, we're really stuck with it. Look out, I don't have a front fender. Oh no! Dude, no front fender in Florida. No front fender in the rain is such a bummer. It's almost as much of a bummer as having a windshield that's higher than that's taller than you are because I can't see shit. When you got a windshield that's taller than you are on a bike and it starts raining like this, you kind of just got to cross your fingers and look for taillights. Oh, oh, take it easy. Oh, maybe it's looking bad out here. My philosophy with rain on a motorcycle is this. The faster you go, the less amount of time that you're in the rain. Therefore, the less amount of time that you have to get to an accident because it's raining. So the faster you go, the safer you are. I'm just trying to play the odds here. So let's all ass. Oh, God. 
<laughs> like we're gonna about to get struck by lightning, let alone get crashed because the rain's falling on us. Holy mackerel, it's coming down now. <laughs> oh Lord, I can't even see the lines on the road anymore. I'm just crossing my fingers and looking at this guy's tail lights. Uh oh, somebody crashed. <laughs> Let's hope they ain't coming for us soon. I can't even, I can't, I can't see anything. I'm not even sure what exit sign this is. That's our exit. No, not yet. That's a problem with windshields is eventually I just gotta stand up above it and be up here. Holy mackerel. That's bad. Yep, I'm just gonna have to stand up here and be above the windshield. This is uh, like pretty much zero visibility right now. Ouch! That hurts! But I can't see down here. It might hurt worse if I wreck. Holy mackerel. We got thunder. We got lightning. <laughs> Snakes alive, baby! Let us make it in one piece. Might have to just stand up on the pegs right now. Holy crap. No idea if my GoPro is going to make it through this. Oh, come on. All right, guys, apparently I'm going for the world record, or at least my personal best, personal worst, number of days, different days in one vlog, because it is yet another day. Let me tell you, uh, getting absolutely dumped on by the rain kind of takes the fight out of you a little bit. So when we got back to the shop, I did not feel like messing with anything. Uh, I didn't get to change the oil on the gold wings. I didn't get to finish up the Sportster. Uh, I basically didn't do anything. So now today, just feeling the Ferris Monica more motivated. I'm at least gonna try and finish up the sports just so it's ready for this weekend. I do have to bartend later at the Shame, so I can't be here all day, but at least I can get the Sportster ready for Shay Lisi to ride this Sunday to Burt's Harley Davidson. Oh, and if you guys didn't know, it won't be in this video, but we're headed to Burt's Harley Davidson this Sunday because it's the grand opening of the OCC Roadhouse. And uh, I don't know, man, I love food, so we're gonna go check it out. And I would really like Shay Lisi to ride her Sportster. Let's see what we can do. While this fairing definitely is not necessary for this bike to ride around, I did want to get it fitted on there. And I pretty much got it fitted on. Uh, it's all loose now. I found out the problem I was having earlier is this, the brackets that these things come with uh, are not compatible with the Hurley qu quick release clamps, one of which I have is um, actually broken, but uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, I had to order some different brackets for it from Bung King. Uh, now these things work just fine, except for, you know, the broken one. Next thing up is this Magura hydraulic clutch. Uh, I'm not normally a fan of hydraulic clutches, but Shaylisi's got very small hands, so she really needed a kind of an easier pull, and Sportsters are known for their really heavy pull. The problem is, is it can't really shift into neutral right now, even though it shifts fine, so that tells me it's not disengaging all the way, so I think I gotta bleed it. never bled a Magura clutch before, but it's got a port down here. I imagine it bleeds much the same as anything else. I tell you, this seems like it's leaking. <laughs> Did you think that this Sportster was getting out of here without getting the real biker treatment? Oh, hell no. This bike came in here as a skirtster, a tiny little motorcycle made for girls, but it's leaving at the Midnight Misogynist, a Harley Davidson made for with my extensive knowledge of high-tech performance, I'm gonna take this Sportster and turn it into something that even your drunk Uncle Larry could be proud of. Hell yeah! Mm, my backwards baseball cap can barely keep all the horsepower knowledge inside my brain. Let me let some ooze out onto this Sportster. <laughs> Sacrifices of the father empower the son. Ah! 
All right, got this thing put together. Time to take the Green Goblin. Sorry, Willem Dafoe's the Green Goblin on a little shakedown run before I trust something as precious as Shea Lisi to it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, be the royal taste tester for this bike. Oh, it certainly feels like a motorcycle to me. Got to shake the cobwebs off this thing a little bit. I wonder how accurate that speedometer is. We were supposed to calibrate it, but I didn't. Now, here's what I was worried about with this clutch. I think it's it's losing pressure. It's harder to get it into neutral. I just pumped it up there. Now it goes into neutral. Yeah, it's losing pressure. I'm not sure what's up with it. Definitely got a little bit of hitch in its giddy up, but it hasn't moved down the road in quite some time. So we're gonna, we're gonna be a little forgiving of it. Gas probably wouldn't have hurt. I have no idea how much gas is in this thing. I don't know, man. This thing feels like it's running just fine to me. Does it track straight? Oh yeah. <laughs> Got that nice, uh, that nice race tech suspension in the front now and some brand new rubber. This thing is freaking straight as an arrow. I love it. It's already noticing something I don't like about it, although she at least you probably won't care, is uh, this is just a hydraulic clutch thing. They release right off the handlebar. I don't know, man. That just drives me nuts. I don't like that. But that's just me. Stick some ethanol free in this sucker. Hmm, 2.7 gallons. That thing was pretty low. My main concern is will this thing continue to go in neutral the entire time without pumping it up if Shaylise is going to ride it. That's what I'm worried about because let me tell you, sometimes when you really need your bike to go into neutral and it won't, it can be a real pain in the neck and pretty dangerous. It seems like it's going into neutral pretty easily right now. I guess the real test will be letting it sit or letting it riding for like several miles without touching the clutch and then seeing if it'll go into neutral after that. All right, let's let the eagle scream. <laughs> I don't know if that's so much a, an eagle scream so as, a, as much a, uh, an eagle's cluck. <laughs> it's still just a sportster. Although I can, I can feel the extra power from the eagles on this baby, all right? It's making a difference. Got to be careful. I don't have... I don't have any mirrors on this thing, so I, I can't see if any of uh, Tampa's finest are sneaking up on me from behind. I'm just testing the bike. Plus, I mean, it's a Sportster. How much trouble could I get in? I feel like I could be like, hey, listen, guys, I'm on a Sportster. Give me a break. Or maybe it's the other way around. They're like, if you're breaking the speed limit on a Sportster, you must be really trying. Ah, these PM brakes are so freaking nice. As I said, we got the race tech suspension in the front, but still the uh, stock Harley stuff out back. We're eventually going to get some Fox IFPs for the back of this thing, but for its shakedown run, we don't really need, don't really need to have expensive shocks in the back just now. I want to kind of see if we're going to have to spend any money on any other big ticket items before I go and start buying uh, expensive shocks for the rear of this motorcycle. Although, I will tell you, from the day we got it, wow, what a world of difference in the handling feels like night and day on this thing but that's just basically a 19 inch front wheel race tech front suspension which is definitely not even set up for me it's definitely set up for a much lighter rider because Shay Lisi's going to be riding this bike but man it just feels like it makes a really big difference but a 19 inch wheel on fresh rubber that was what it really needed because the old tires on this thing with the 21 which also had a bent rim like let me tell you <laughs> it didn't exactly uh inspire confidence in the twisties and i know a sportster is exactly known or harley davidson in general isn't exactly known to be the best handling motorcycle in the world but it feels a lot better than it did i gotta tell you that a sport bike it is not but much better than the stock stuff that's for sure not to mention that the the fork oil that we took out of there pretty much looked like mud <laughs> that coupled with uh just regular harley suspension <laughs> It's, it's a lot better. It's night and day already. Even without new rear shocks, it's night and day. And once we put those Fox IFPs out back, and I really think that's going to make a really big difference on this motorcycle. Riding this thing down the road right now, it does not feel like we had this entire motorcycle ripped apart. <laughs> it's such a good feeling to get on a bike and be like, man, it feels just fine. 
and all that work we did to it, all this stuff, all these headaches, all this different stuff that we had to go through, and the heartache, the triumph, the confusion, lots of confusion, lots of confusion. <laughs> and, and then I get on it right around, it's like, oh my gosh, it's fine. That's a good feeling. Let's see if it'll go into neutral now. After not touching the clutch for a minute, this is going to be a test. It does. Very cool. <laughs> Dual Sportster, it is not. I'll leave that to Jordan Ray. If you watch two her two wheels, maybe you see her husband also has a channel, Jordan Ray, and he's built a dual sporty on that thing, uh, which is actually like the rigid mount, same same bike. I'm not sure what year, I forget what year it is, but it's the same exact motorcycle as this, basically. It's, a, it's an 883. But we've kind of gone the opposite route. We've made this one lower for Shay Lisi and sportier for on-road instead of him, who's trying to make a kind of a dual sport kind of motorcycle out of it, which I always think is really cool for sportsters. I love that style. But when it comes to Shay Lisi being four foot 11, that is not going to be a bike that she can ride. All right, I'm sure Shay Lisi's going to want at least one mirror on this thing. I should probably also find out if the speedometer is accurate, too. I mean, who needs a speedometer? I put a speedometer on it for uh, Shay Lisi, but uh, I don't know. I've never felt like I needed a speedometer on a bike. I heard a bunch of people complaining about these uh, gauntlet fairings, saying that they, uh, they really didn't like the way it blew the wind, like it was a real problem for them. So far, I mean, I don't think I've been above like 60 or 70 miles an hour, but so far, it's not been an issue for me whatsoever. Maybe it's because of my height. Now I'm a little worried because when Shaylisi gets on this thing, being so much shorter than I am, I don't know if it's going to end up being a problem for her, but uh, it feels great for me. It feels like it's kind of throwing the wind directly over my head. Maybe a little hitting hitting my face, but it also feels like when I like pull my visor up, it's directing like a nice little breeze directly at my face, which here in the Florida summer is not a bad thing. I'm not going to worry about the wind on this thing too much just yet. Like I said, we're still in a shakedown run for uh, a testing procedure on this bike, so it's going to be, it's, there's, there's definitely going to be a lot more stuff we got to do to it. All right, do we go into neutral? Oh, missed it. Missed it again. Uh-oh. Got it that time. Well, these bikes also aren't known for being like the best bike in the world to get into neutral. I'm gonna get this thing back to the shop, look around for some leaks, and uh, finish up this video. So far, so good, I think. Well, I think I got the Sportster pretty much ready for its couple month long shakedown run before we tear the thing apart again and make it nice. Well, you know, Brap Star's version of nice anyway. We have to do everything twice because uh, we were taught backwards as a joke. Now, don't think I've forgotten about the only other Harley I own. Well, I don't actually own the Sportster, that's Shaylisi's bike, but the Har only Harley I own. Don't think I've forgotten about the only Harley I own. The FXR is coming soon. Soon, don't worry. And I have some parts here that are gonna, uh, well, some of them aren't gonna do anything to help it run, but some of them are. First and foremost, I got a Saved by the Bell special. This 1990s piece of steez right here. This is just absolute American chopper, 1990s bling right here. And when this thing came up, it's just a front wheel, by the way, it's a 19. I could not say no. I think that that's gonna look absolutely ridiculous on the FXR, and I'm in love with it. I also now have two e Evo transmissions because I bought the wrong one the first time and now I have one that's actually for an FXR that came out of a 1994 FXR and this one's uh, for just a regular rigid mount soft tail but I'm gonna swap the internals because this has got some nice Baker parts in it it's got this really nice billet plate up here and this has just got stock Harley stuff in it so I'm basically gonna take uh, two transmissions one with bad internals or at least okay internals uh, and one with good internals and make one hopefully one working transmission for my FXR. I've got my updated primary and my starter right here. And of course, patiently waiting for me to buy the rest of the parts is this 113 cubic inch SNS V-Twin. So yes, I'm still working on it. It just takes time, which I am short on, and money, which I never have enough of. <laughs> so time and money and patience, three things that I was tragically uh, born without. But we're plugging along anyway, because nobody told us we could. That's going to about do it for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment down below, tell me what an idiot I am for taking an incredibly long amount of time and wasting money buying billet front wheels for my FXR when I should be buying pistons for it. But I don't got shot. I had to have it. It's a billet. 90s billet, man. I had to have it. Anyway, till next time, y'all. Keep it weird.